problem with just saying America is Egypt is there is no context to the statement. Some people may have noticed a wave of America is Egypt information spreading across social media. And I can assure you, I've had nothing to do with that. Usually when you hear the information, it is very superficial and has very little depth to it. It makes it very easy for some pseudo brainwashed historian to just say, America is not Egypt, Egypt is Egypt. And then they'll go on to recite insignificant facts that they learned about Egypt when they were spoon fed up the rectum by some academic they trust. And now that spoonful has floated up the rectum and to the heart. So now they take it personal. How dare you say America is Egypt after all the bullshit I've learned. I've seen the pyramids, buddy. I've been there. That is definitely Egypt. You struck a nerve with their whole perception of ancient history, a subject they may have felt with some personal esteem. So it's only natural. They may be a little butthurt after all. They did loosen their loins to get that spoonful up there. And now you're telling them that spoonful was no good? You'd be mad too. As many people are the first time they realize all of the lies they've been butt fed. I've seen this picture being used a lot. This is the Tennessee Centennial and International Exposition in 1897, where the city of Memphis built a large pyramid in its exhibit. So I know there was a lot of rumor about this actually being in Memphis. It turns out, according to the information we're reading here, that this pyramid exposition was actually in Nashville. And you see the Parthenon building beside the pyramid. And for those of you who are familiar with these centennial fairs, these world fairs, these centennial expositions, they claim to build all of these unique buildings out of just plaster and they can easily be broken down. And some people have said that there are actually buildings that were old world buildings that were part of expositions before being torn down. But apparently, this pyramid was not in Memphis, although the city of Memphis featured a large pyramid as part of their exhibition. The total attendance was 1.7 million people. That was a lot of people for 1897 especially. Well, the, the reason, listen, listen, okay? The reason that they named this place Memphis is because it reminded them of Memphis, Egypt. Oh yeah, Memphis. Yeah, that reminded, that reminded me. You know what? This place reminds me of the place that Pharaoh Menes. Yeah, it was Pharaoh Menes. I've been reading old Egyptian books. Listen, I knew about Egypt before Napoleon and his boys. See, this place reminds me of the, you, you remember Pharaoh Menes from the, from the old Egyptian stories that we used to read with our parents? Yeah, Pharaoh Menes. Yeah, you remember he started a city because he wanted to unite upper and lower Egypt. I don't want to call BS, but what do these assholes know about Memphis, Egypt? The students of archaeology and the curiously inclined have spent much time and money digging into the bowels of these hillocks to find only a few bones mingled with earthenware utensils and occasionally, according to Ignatius Donnelly and others, both stone and copper implements of warfare. If this be true, does the discovery of these copper implements throw a flashlight of great interest upon that remarkable jump from the age of stone to the age of bronze attributed to the races of Europe? If indeed these mound builders were workers in copper, it is evident that with them, at least, there was a copper age between the age of stone and that of bronze. 
And as no copper cult is found among the prehistoric races of Europe, it might well be that in those early times, the mound builders, having observed the properties of this metal, invented bronze and introduced it as a thing completed to the dwellers of the Eastern Hemisphere. Hmm. That is a thing they say about indigenous Americans is that they did not have the ability to smelt heavy metals. They couldn't smelt anything. Of course, we know that's a lie. Continuing, this theory requires no strain upon intelligence than the hypothesis of archaeologists who would have us believe that with a bound, European races proceeded from stone to bronze. Bronze is composed of copper and tin, and it is necessary to believe that a knowledge of one of these metals antedated the invention of bronze, yet no utensil implement of copper or tin is found among the early peoples of Europe. If they are found in the tombs of the American mound builders, it is surely a reasonable hypothesis that these people perfected the invention of bronze while the Europeans were mere bearers and users of stone. The same ingenious delver into the almost impenetrable past finds so strong a resemblance between the mounds and the cult of the mound builders and the pyramids of Egypt and the habits of Egyptians that he does not hesitate to declare a close affinity between the two peoples, giving the advantage of age to the American branch. End quote. Builders of the Pyramid, Story of Shelby County.